Let's take a look at the Pika Star um, Artificial Star Collimating Aid. Um, just take a general look at this. Um, we've got a little black box here with a knob and this strange little white dot at the front here. Yeah, you probably can't see this from back there, but as I turn this knob, um, we can actually see a little light coming on at the front here. We're gonna take a closer look at it in just a moment. Um, I always like to tell people when they ask what this is, that it's the world's dimmest LED torch, basically. Um, that you'd have to be uh, really in absolute darkness to be able to see your way around with this very, very dim LED torch. Okay, what's going on with this device? Um, this is actually an artificial star, um, which sounds like a rather frightening idea uh, when you first think about it. Um, visions of Death Star and Star Wars uh, come into mind. What's actually going on here is we've got a tiny little polished cut end of a, uh, a fiber optic uh, connector. Um, and this is producing a tiny little star image that is under 50 microns. Now, by positioning this gadget at the right distance from a telescope that requires collimation, we can actually use it instead of a real star to make adjustments to the telescope optics. So this is gonna mean a lot to you if you've ever actually tried to get, uh, tried to collimate your Newtonian telescope um, on a real star and have encountered difficulties and perhaps want to get it um, uh, to a high standard during the day, this device uh, will actually let you do it. We can actually select, select a range of uh, m uh, magnitudes here for the setting. It goes from uh, one to eight. I don't know whether you can get in a bit closer, uh, Andrew, and, and just give a closer view of that there while I, while I switch that. Can you see that there? There you go. You can just see the light, I think, actually just coming on and dimming down as I as I turn the knob. Uh, printed on the uh, on the device, we've got a range of distances to set the artificial star from the telescope. It relies very heavily on using the um, uh, mathematics of the Rayleigh criterion to actually set the artificial star at a critical distance, just beneath, uh, so that the star, uh, the artificial star, is just beneath the telescope's resolving uh, power. So it's fairly critical to actually put the artificial star at a minimum distance away from the telescope. And you can actually see here that for an 80 millimeter telescope, the distance is six meters. So that's six meters or more away from the telescope. For a 200 mil instrument, um, like a 200 millimeter Newtonian reflector, um, we should set it up at 15 meters as an absolute minimum distance. And we've got instruments uh, all the way up here to a 300 mil at 23 meters and to a 500 mil at 38 meters. Um, included with the Pico Star is a um, Velcro stand here. Um, one piece of Velcro simply fits to the back of the uh, Pico Star. I'll just fit that onto it now. Um, we just fit that onto the rear there. And that allows us to fit this little metal plate um, that enables it to be fitted to any small tripod so that you can set the thing up at a kind of an ideal distance at the bottom of the garden or, or wherever you want to use by. We're gonna give the uh, Pika Star a practical test now. We're gonna be looking at a 12 inch uh, Mead LX200 uh, Smith Cassegrain telescope. And uh, Ralph's going to show you uh, some of the salient points uh, that the Pico Star could show you. We've got we've got a little bit of a snag. The Pico Star, on its own, isn't really bright enough. Uh, that the uh, the lamp at the front here, the, the LED, isn't quite bright enough to show up on the camera. So we're going to demonstrate some of the points uh, using a fairly bright uh, uh, bright light here. And I'm going to put a little cap on it. Ralph's going to sue me because he's my night vision's gone completely. Yeah, his uh, irises have been gone down to the size of a millimetre and are going to stay that way now indefinitely. Um, there we go. Much safer. Happy with that? I'm um, exit pupils. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So we're going to put that on there uh, with a bit of Velcro. Try and bodge it up. And then we're going to put the Pika Star next to it. And we're going to put that basically uh, about 50 metres. Uh, 50, 60 metres downrange. So let's do that now and go outside. Right, what you're looking at there is the outer focus diffraction pattern of an artificial light source. We've made this slightly brighter than we'd normally use, so you can see the thing collapsing. 
more easily. One thing you can probably notice is that there's a, a bit of a spike there and when I take it back through the other side to focus you'll see it appear at the top just there and it's caused entirely by heat in the top of the telescope tube nothing to be concerned about if you want to get rid of it simply tip the telescope up and point it down again and it'll take a little while for that to settle back to the top the idea behind this is to show you how to collimate a Smith Gas Ground Telescope. At the moment it's fairly reasonably collimated, but what we're going to do is take it out of collimation and then show you how to get it back again. Now if you want to see the comparison between the light source we're using, that is very, very bright. And this is our Pico Star. This is a normal torch with quite a large hole in it, so we can actually show you very clearly. The Pico Star isn't bright enough, but yet the Pico Star is more accurate for doing this sort of collimation. Um, what we actually need to see is the rings expanding at either side, as they're doing there. And then when we see this hole forming in the middle, what we've got to make sure is that that hole is exactly in the centre of this expanded diffraction ring. So once we've done a rough estimation of where it should be, then we'll move on to a higher magnification and fine-tune it. Right, if you look at our image of the star now, you'll probably see it's got some tiny spikes coming off and it doesn't look as good as it could do. If we take it out of focus, what I've done is I've taken the telescope out of collimation and what you're going to see is that central spot appear, not in the centre there it is. If we take it back through focus out the other side and there it is again. Now the idea of collimation is to get that central spot right in the centre. So the first thing we've got to do is discover where that is and the easiest way to do it that's the bottom of the telescope. That's one side. And there's the top. So our problem appears to be at the top. So if we look round the front, we can see the collimating screws. These are astro engineering um, alternatives to the normal screws and make collimation very, very easy. By simply turning these knobs backwards and forwards, we can discover which way the image moves. As you can see, as I move the adjustment down, lifting the telescope up, this is elevating the telescope in order to keep the image right in the center. Now, if you look at that, just by using that one screw, identifying the position, we've managed to bring it back to collimation. Now, I'm not saying this is 100% accurate, but for the demonstration purposes that we're using this for, um, that's all you need to do. Right, well that concludes our demonstration of collimation. Any telescope that's not collimated properly isn't working as good as it could do. Disappointments with telescopes are quite often caused because they're not collimated. What we really need to do is get our heads around this issue, practice with our telescopes and if it all goes wrong, bring it here and I'll collimate it for you. That's a nice little detail. That's um, the, the reason you can see the uh, seas on the dark uh, area there, the area of the moon that's not illuminated. That's actually being uh, uh, 
shown up by the light reflected from the Earth. So that's Earth shine, basically. If you imagine you're standing on the, the moon, uh, looking up uh, on that uh, area that's not illuminated, the Earth is going to be the brightest thing in your sky, um, more than enough to uh, light up what we're actually seeing there. Yeah, that's nice. There we are, a nicely collimated telescope, giving us a nice view of the moon. Job done.